the ship can send. This is the Hikari Super Express, bound for Okayama. Our first stop for this trip is Aoi Station in Hyogo Prefecture. It's a pretty quiet area, and we actually didn't see any other tourists around. From here, we're taking a taxi to visit a certified Japanese swordsmith. We'll be spending the afternoon at Master Hayamitsu's workshop, where he'll be teaching us how to forge our own knives. <laughs> to really get into working mode, we were each given a tenugui, which are traditional Japanese towels made of lightweight cotton. <laughs> you look good. Here's an example of what we'll be making today. We're starting off with a close-up demonstration by the master to learn the first steps of knife forging. It's especially important to pay close attention to the rhythm and technique of hammering the hot steel. Now it's our turn, and to get the hang of things, we'll first practice our movements on a slab of wood. <laughs> Moving on to actual steel, we're applying some chalk to one side so that we can keep track of which is which. It's really easy to get the sides mixed up, especially as beginners. In order to form the blade's shape, we have to put the steel through many rounds of heating and hammering. It's not easy, and luckily the master was there to help fix all of our mistakes. It was really helpful that I got to watch Jeff go first, but when it came to my turn, I still needed a lot of guidance. The hammer's upside down. And now that our blades are roughly formed, we need to do some grinding and filing to enhance the shape. So this random uncle stopped by, and turns out he's friends with Master Hayamitsu. And it was really funny because he just couldn't help but to step in and help us beginners out. It's a pretty warm day today, especially working near the furnace. So we're going to take a quick break to enjoy the views, and afterwards we'll keep on working. Back in the workshop, we're preparing to harden our blades by coating it with clay, and then we'll heat it to about 800 degrees Celsius. Let's go! This heating and quenching process is really important because it helps to harden the steel and it also has to be done carefully, otherwise the steel might become too brittle.
We're nearing the end and it's time to sharpen the blades. As a final touch, the master is engraving our katakana names by hand and it's really amazing how nice the font looks with just a nail and hammer. In total, we spent about 4-5 to five hours with Master Hayamitsu this afternoon, and finally our blades are complete! I was actually feeling quite tired by this point and just wanted to head straight to our hotel in Kyoto, but Jeff convinced me to make a midway stop and catch a view of Himeji Castle, one of the most iconic castles in Japan. We're finally headed to Kyoto to spend the night, and tomorrow we'll be doing more workshops. We're starting our day with a Japanese pottery lesson at a studio that's uniquely located right next to a historic pagoda in Kyoto. This shop has a 300 year history of producing ceramic ware, and these days they also offer workshops for visitors and they can actually ship the finished pieces back to your home country. What's great about this place is that you get a dedicated instructor for the duration of the lesson, and they can teach you to make all sorts of shapes. For the first round of crafting, Jeff is going to try making a bowl that curves inwards, and I'll try making a plate. For the second round, Jeff is going to make a bowl that curves outwards and I'm going to make a mug. The last step is to choose our glaze colors. Then the staff will finish the pieces and send them back to us. It turned out to be another hot and humid day today. So now we're going to take a break and enjoy a relaxing foot bath and massage nearby. Traveling in Japan usually involves a lot of walking, so if you guys ever visit and want a nice way to rest your feet, we would definitely recommend stopping at a foot spot like this one.
Now that we're feeling refreshed again, we're ready to head out to a special event for the night. It's an Edo-themed summer night festival that's only held for two nights. While summer festivals are quite a common thing in Japan, what's special about this one is that it takes place inside an Edo-style theme park. And this place was so accurately recreated that it's often used for TV and movie sets. After a bit of exploring, the main highlight of the night is about to begin. It's Bono Dori, a traditional summer dance. Bono Dori are held all over Japan during the summer months, and it's a great opportunity to enjoy traditional song and dance and hear Japanese instruments like taiko drums and shinobui flutes. This was such a nice way to wrap up the evening. And even though we were too shy to join the dance, we still enjoyed it from the sidelines. What about you guys? Would you have joined in? It's already the last day of our weekend trip, so we're checking out of our hotel and grabbing a quick morning smoothie from 7-Eleven before heading to the final activity that we've got planned. Now we're visiting a traditional accessory making workshop run by a local couple. There's lots of things that you can make here, and today we'll be creating some bamboo hairpins and origami earrings. For the hairpin, we got to choose a piece of rare bamboo that's been smoked for centuries, and we paired it with some handmade beads and charms. It was also fun to do a bit of sanding and polishing, and then the pieces were attached and our first item was complete. Next, we made origami earrings using Japanese washi paper. It was quite challenging because of how small the folds had to be, but Jeff was actually surprisingly good at it. He made me a pair of paper crane earrings and they turned out super cute. When it was time to go, it was super rainy out because of a nearby typhoon. 
We were all wet by the time we made it back to the Shinkansen station, but luckily the trains were delayed a bit so we had some time to dry off and grab a bite to eat before boarding. For this ride, we're trying the green car for the first time, since we managed to get tickets at a good price. It's sort of like the business class equivalent for the Shinkansen, and it turned out to be a really nice treat after a hectic journey out in the rainstorm. Anyways, that's it for this trip. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next one.